day one was quite a success. Um, everything just kind of happened to go well. Uh, I got there, I fixed the water tank issues. Um, I got some more supplies. Alan was gracious enough to drive me to Ace Hardware and Food Lion. Um, big shout out to Alan because I could not have done this trip without him. Um, he's been so supportive and so helpful, which didn't need to be after selling me a boat. He could have just sold me the boat and moved on with his life, but he was very much involved and I thank him so much for that. So at this point we're in Southport, which is just inside of the uh, Cape Fear before you reach the ocean. Uh, we're posted up here for the night. Since I got here, since I started sailing around 2 o'clock, um, I only had about three hours to sail, so I wanted to post up for the night, get a good night's rest, especially since I didn't sleep very much last night because I was on a plane from California to here, and there was a three-hour time difference. Um, so I just wanted some time to rest up before I started taking on the ocean. This is home for the next several weeks. There's my bed, obviously. I'll be watching a lot of movies up there. Nav station, kitchen, head, and that's about it. Cozy living. We have officially made it out of the inlet and are now on the ocean. Time for my favorite part. Let's put up the sails. Sails are up. We're going about four and a half knots downwind. Life is good. What's for dinner tonight? Chickpeas and corn. Day two went pretty well. I uh, sailed for the first time. Uh, got the sails up. We were getting at one point near six knots. So the age of the sails and the bottom paint, everything considered, it's running pretty well. Um, <clears throat> wind died down completely at one point. So I did have to motor maybe like a quarter of the way um, and then obviously I motored all the way into port, which right now I am in Little River, South Carolina. I just crossed the border from North Carolina to South Carolina. Uh, I'm posted up in the ICW about eight miles in. That's why you'll see 38 miles on the chart, but it's really just 30 miles worth of actual progress because I'm going to have to go out of that uh, to get back to the ocean side. Started day three. Um... Just before the sun's come up, it's about 6.30. I'm trying to get a jump on what will probably be my longest day so far. Um, the ICW is moving pretty fast right now, along with us. So hopefully I will get out of here in about an hour and then back to the ocean. It's about 48 miles to Georgetown. I managed to get the helm balanced enough that I could even sit down here for a little bit, which is great because it'll be about 12 hours of sailing today, uh, so it'd be great to not be at the wheel the entire time. Uh, hoping to make it to Georgetown. Uh, we're clipping along real good at five knots, so that might be 10 hours or so. Uh, see ya. Wow, what a roller coaster day three was. It's been about 10 hours sailing. I got 50 miles. I had to go up the Georgetown River, um, which I thought was going to take me like an hour and a half. It took me more like three and a half hours because A, it's a river, not an inlet. So the current pushed back way hard. I was going up maybe 2.7 knots at some points. Um, secondly, I nearly ran aground trying to get into a marina that wasn't deep enough. Um, and by nearly, I basically did. I'm worried I may have bent the keel, so I'll have to check that out in Florida. Um, but then I had to go upriver even further to find a marina that I could fit in. Um, it's been a rough day. On top of that, uh, there's some fuel leaking out of the engine somewhere. I can't figure out where. So, 
and try and figure that out before I go. If not, I don't know what I'm going to do. Guess we'll figure it out. Bright and early, Saturday morning, uh, day four. I'm going to be spending some time in port. Uh, there's a leak in my engine. It's leaking diesel fuel a little bit. And I went all night with it, but I don't want to go with it if I have the opportunity not to. Um, because I'm not too worried about not making time. Because I got a little car charger DC plug so I can charge my electronics um while i'm on the boat um so last night i would have preferred to not come into georgetown and would have preferred to just keep on sailing but i only get 24 hours worth of charge on my navigation systems and then the battery banks the external battery bank gives me another 24 um and since i didn't plug in last night or the night before um i had 25% um, when I was coming in, so I would not have been able to make another night. So I had to come in, and I had to get this plug um, so that I could keep us going. So essentially, the solar panel was just charging the battery and the navigation and the lights uh, and stuff. All the DC power on the boat. I didn't realize when I got this that there wasn't an inverter because it was hooked up to shore power, and I saw AC outlets, and I assumed it would going through the batteries, the DC to the inverter to AC. I didn't know it just went straight to AC. But um, now we've adapted. Now we're getting ready to go. Cleaning up, cleaning up a diesel leak and I found these absorbent pads are fucking amazing. They absorb the fuel but leave water. Outstanding. Day four, you might ask, what happened today, Llama? What happened today is absolutely nothing. Um, I stayed in the marina because my engine was leaking from the injectors so I had a mechanic come look at it and they're still sort of leaking but not nearly as bad as it was before there was like a pool of diesel um, underneath the engine so and it only leaks when I'm motoring so I deem that an acceptable risk thing as I want to be spending more time sailing and it's not leaking too terribly bad. So with that, <laughs> ironically, um, I will be spending about 14 hours tomorrow on the ICW. Um, Sunday and Monday, it's getting to be extremely windy and stormy um, on the outside, so I cannot sail. And seeing as I took a day off today, I can't take another day off tomorrow. Um, I'm a day behind schedule of my latest expected arrival um which is bad because that was a real low number that was like 25 miles a day um which i can definitely do more than that so we're gonna spend all day tomorrow motoring um until we get to charleston then we'll figure it out from charleston four days in i'm finally taking a shower at the marina because i've been wearing the same shirt for three days and i can smell myself these reeds are massive they're like taller than me God damn, that's a big boat. We barely both fit in this channel. Two birds, three pounds of bark because they're not gay. Okay, so what happened today? What happened today is I uh, motored down the ICW for nearly 50 miles. Um, remember that fuel leak we were talking about? Well. It was about half a gallon of diesel, almost, that was sitting in the pan underneath my engine. Um, which, all things considered, if I'm going 50 miles um, and sailing for motoring for 10 hours, that's not the worst that could happen. Um, you know, it's there was less fuel there than there was when I checked it before getting it fixed so it's better it's not good in any capacity but uh hopefully this will be my last day of motoring or at least long motoring i don't intend to do it i don't like to do it i like sailing more um and it looks like the storm isn't going to be too terrible and i can stay near the coast and sail 
all the way through and hopefully we can continue to sail overnight if the wind is good um if not uh about 40 50 miles from here is hilton head um so that'll be my stop point if i can't continue overnight but if i can continue overnight we're just going to skip over hilton head and um try and end up in savannah because that's about 60 miles um then after that, we'll see how long the jump is from Savannah to Brunswick. Um, we're making progress, though. Uh, we're definitely making progress, so I'm happy about that. It's just terrifying, <laughs> you know. You know, when I was laser racing, it was if I mess up or something doesn't go right, I'm making thousand, two thousand dollar mistake, you know, with wet paint. The worst that could happen is I make a five thousand dollar mistake. This is significantly more. This is a twenty thousand dollar mistake if something messes up. So every time anything happens, I'm on my toes. You know, grounding with wet paint is nothing really. It's a swing keel. It's it just goes back into the boat. People beach them on purpose all the time. Grounding with this, that's a serious serious problem. If this keel breaks, this boat's basically totaled. Um, you know, this engine, uh, God knows how many thousands of dollars it'd be to replace this engine if it craps out. Um, plus, you know, I don't want to have to call CETO at any point. And if my engine craps out while I'm using it and I can't get back anywhere, it would be pretty devastating. By the way, I don't know if you see, I'm uh, on the bed with a t-shirt on. I don't know if it's a combination of being southern more... <laughs> and um me putting in a lot of work to get myself into the dock today and um the just the weather in general but like it's actually warm here i'm like actually sweating i took off my jacket so it's times like these where uh single handing isn't the most fun part i mean i'm motoring through uh to charleston it's five nautical miles that i have to go so i mean i have an hour but, um, you know, it's a busy harbor way, and, uh, like, when I'm with other people, I can bring up and drop sails in, like, two minutes, but on this boat by myself, it's a lot harder to do that, so, guess we're gonna motor along. His name is Clyde! For the first time in six days of this trip, I have started using a composting toilet. Um, uh, this morning I wasn't in an official marina, so I had to take a dump somewhere. Uh, it doesn't smell yet. From what I've heard from all the reports from other people, it's going to start smelling. Um, I looked at the this stuff to get rid of it. I looked at the removal system, it doesn't seem too bad. Um, you know, you just gotta grin and bear it. Um, I guess I'll keep you updated on that at some point. I feel like a fucking idiot. I tried to pull into this dock. Current was too swift, you know. <sighs> Single handing's fucking hard. Now I'm just stuck. I'm gonna have to call Boat US to fucking tow me. I thought I was done with this shit. Fucking embarrassing. Look at that. No shoreline in sight. Just the ships and I. So, here's where I screwed up, and here's what the plan is so far. So, I decided to sail today and tomorrow and Friday because I figured I could have a straight shot it's 130 miles to Jacksonville figured I'd have a straight shot wind looked good that looked like a good window for me problem is it's downwind and um, I don't have an auto helm so the only way for me to get off the controls is to uh, lock the wheel which I can't do downwind 
because uh, I can't balance this thing uh, on that degree. So I'm making progress at about four or five um, knots average, which means if I sail for about 20 hours, so I start out at 9 a.m., make it till about five in the morning, um, right around where 21 hours, you know, right around where uh, where the sun will start to come up, then I'll be more visible to the ships in these lanes. I don't want to fall asleep and drift while I got all these ships in these uh, these shipping lanes. Um, so be more awake um, during the night portion and then be visible during the day. Get about two hours of sleep and try and get as much as I can um, between that seven to seven window um, tomorrow. We'll see how it all works out. I'm gonna also have an alarm on me that'll go off every hour during the night just in case I do fall asleep I won't be asleep for too long uh, we'll see how it goes it's about four o'clock on Wednesday I'm about 99 miles from my destination uh, there's on AIS only one ship in front of me um, I'm pretty sure it's stationary too so I'm basically gonna drop sails um, and then motor past it and then uh, take a nap, try and get some sleep, uh, wake up around 6 o'clock. Um, I mean, I'm going to turn, turn on my lights before uh, I go to sleep. And then hopefully I can wake up and, and sail through the night or motor through the night. Either way, make some progress towards uh, Jacksonville. I'm about 75 miles away from my target destination, which uh, I've actually changed uh, to St. Mary's something um just because uh i'm just absolutely exhausted doing this trip and i wake up in the morning ready to go and then i get i don't know eight hours into it and i've ex i started at nine this morning and i'm still so tired and it's 5 30 so i'm trying to make this like shorter i might feel like this would have been a mistake to have done this 130 mile stretch um, but the wind seems to be changing a bit so with any luck we might be able to set the sails and I can actually like set the wheel and sleep for a bit but for right now for the next two hours or so I'm gonna just drift I'm gonna let the boat do its thing, see where it takes itself, uh, and then track where that is. It's 6.45, so not super late. I mean, I'm tired, but I tried to take a nap, but I just couldn't. Um, when I drift, uh, I end up drifting southbound, so at least we're making progress while we sleep. So I think I'm just gonna keep going until I'm just really tired and then, uh, <laughs> See if my body will let me sleep. <laughs> it's 10:30 p.m. I've gone like 60 miles today, 65 miles something. I'm so tired. I'm gonna pass out. Hopefully, wake up between like 4 and 6 a.m. Make my way to um, Brunswick, Georgia, and knock out there, and then try and make my push for Jacksonville. I don't know why I thought I could make a push to Jax in this three days uh, on the water. I'm so fucking tired. I've gotten some off and on sleep throughout the night. Um, it's 7 a.m. I've either been drifting or motoring through the night. Now I'm up on sails. I've got less than a quarter tank, so I gotta be conservative with the motor. Even though I'm going only like three knots, um, I gotta make sure I get into my next port. The last place that I went to, their uh, diesel pumps were down, and that was the only place in that area. Um, so we just gotta send it and see what happens. a little bit about the modern style of construction I mean like what what is this what is this random block on the side what's this other block on the side the color scheme 
looks awful. I mean, look at everything around it. This car wash is great. Terracotta roof, night theme. It's hotel, in theme. And then there's just, there's just this. So we're in the marina all day today. I just went out and got some supplies and some Waffle House, but as you can probably gather, today is a day for cleaning because my cockpit looks absolutely terrible and everything else also looks absolutely terrible because when I'm doing the solo, I just kind of throw shit around and I gotta get ready to have people on board. As you can see, we can only be on the motor today. That water is glass. There is like absolutely no wind today um we're going down at seven knots right now we are going with the current of the river uh if we can push along at i don't know maybe six knots or so we could push to jacksonville by today uh if we're going five or less we might have to stop at st mary's and then make jacksonville tomorrow we'll let's see so i got not even a mile out before i started having some engine problems my oil indicator was showing nothing um, so I dropped anchor and put some oil in it, then it was showing too high, then it was showing like completely maxed out, and then it went back to nothing. Um, I don't know if I have an indicator issue or if I fucked up with the oil, but uh, now I'm back at the marina, back at Morningstar. Um, I've called a mechanic, see if they can come look at it. Uh, they got no response back, so I, we might be here for a little bit longer. 50 miles away from Jacksonville. I was really hoping to get to Jacksonville. Couldn't make it, I guess. 